Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Nova Gnome Creations and I'm Nova. And today we are going to be making a Pokeball um, applique or coaster. Um, and also this will link into if you would like to make a Pokeball granny square, which will be um, a modification um, in a second video if you would like to be able to make it into a granny square. But for this tutorial, we are first going to make the Pokeball itself. So a little bit about the Pokeball. Um, as you may have noticed on the Granny Square, you can make it in regular um, worsted weight yarn, or this one is made in um, regular worsted weight sparkle yarn. Um, it is going to come out to Uh, roughly four and a half inches um, long and uh, it could be an applique or even it could be a coaster um, it is a good size so it's really gonna fit any mug or cup that you want to put on it for materials you're gonna need an H hook or a five millimeter hook you're going to need a red a black and a white yarn. Now I'm using worsted weight and for this particular one I'm going to be using a worsted weight sparkle yarn. These are all Red Heart Super Saver uh, metallics in red, black, and white. Um, but you can use any yarn that you would like. If you don't use a worsted weight yarn, um, just use the corresponding hook size for the yarn that you use and be aware that it will come out a little bit different sized. So if you use a three or a sport weight type of yarn, um, it'll come out a bit smaller. If you use a bulky yarn, it'll come out a bit bigger um, and you'll want to use the corresponding hook size for the size of yarn that you're using. So you'll need these three colors and that is, um, and oh, and also some scissors and a darning needle and that is all you need for this project it is um, really simple um, in supplies and you just need three colors of yarn and your basic uh, crochet um, items all right so to begin grab your white yarn and your crochet hook and we're gonna start with making a magic circle if you've never made a magic circle before and you need a little bit of help or you need a refresher, I have a magic circle video tutorial that I will link in the description box below uh, where I kind of slow it down and explain how you make a magic circle. But for the purposes of this video, we're going to assume that you already know how to make a magic circle and then you're going to chain three. This uh, chain three is gonna count as your first double crochet. And then you're going to double crochet into your magic circle a further 13 times so that you have a total of 14 double crochets in your magic circle. So we have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. Before moving on, I'm just going to count to make sure that I have all of my stitches. 
So including this chain, um, chain three is our first stitch. We're just going to want to make sure that we have 14 stitches. And so I make sure that this is focused. There we go. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. So we know we have fourteen stitches. And then we're just going to grab our magic circle tail and we are going to cinch the circle nice and tight. Voila! No um, circle in the middle. Don't be afraid to pull nice and tightly on this um, and get a really good close like that. <clears throat> and then we are just going to begin a slip stitch into the third chain, um, which will be like the top of your double crochet. But instead of pulling your white through for your slip stitch, we're going to be bringing in black. So you went through that first um, stitch, which was actually the top of a chain three, uh, like you were going to slip stitch or even single crochet, but instead of yarning over and pulling through with your white, we're actually going to put black on our hook and we're going to pull that through. And then we're just going to pull it through our original one and complete the slip stitch, our original loop that was on our hook. Then you can kind of give your white a little tug to make sure that your uh, loop is nice and tight. And now we have successfully color changed to black. Now what I'm going to do before continuing is I'm actually going to sit this down and I'm going to tie my black um, tail that I just have from attaching to my white. So here's my magic circle tail. I'm just going to push that to the side and I'll weave that in later. Um, but here is my current white that I'm working with and here is the black uh, short end of the yarn and I'm just going to give those a little knot together to secure that black into there. And I'm going to um, kind of hold the, the circle down and knot it towards the top like this so that I can crochet over um, these as I go. So I'm gonna give it a double knot. And then um, before continuing with my working um, yarn of my black, which is the long piece, I'm going to get my get my threads all arranged how I'd like them. Um, so I'm going to make sure that I have the black and the white, um, the white working yarn and the black tail, and I'm going to be holding those to my work and I'm going to crochet over them. You don't have to crochet over the black if you don't want to. You could weave that in later, but you're going to want to crochet over the white because we aren't cutting the white, we're going to carry it around and have it um, stay on for the next part. Okay, so now that we've got our um, black on our hook, we're going to be working over this white um, working yarn and this black tail. So we've got our working black um, over our fingers ready to work with. And what we're going to be doing is we are going to do a back loop only single crochet all the way around. Um, and so a back loop only stitch is, you see how a stitch um, looks like a V from the top? Well, this back loop right here, this is our back loop only. Um, if you need a more drawn out explanation of a uh, back loop only, I do have a tutorial that explains um, back loop only stitching um, and I will link that in my description below. So we're just going to work over these um, two colors, uh, this black one to weave it in and this white one because we are going to be using it later. Um, and we're just going to back loop only single crochet. And you'll notice that when you do a back loop only, the front loop kind of makes a defined little ridge 
Um, and it looks really nice. So back loop only and single crochet over these um, two pieces of yarn. So here is our nicely defined V shape right there. We're gonna only go under the back loop and then we're gonna crochet a single crochet, making sure that we go over these and every now and then giving them a little tug just to make sure that they are not getting wadded up or anything like that. And you'll know you're doing the back loop only right when you see this little ridge emerging and don't worry, oops, don't worry about your stitch looking loose like this as you're working. It will not stay like that. It, it just looks like that while you're doing it. So back loop only and we're going to continue around for all of 14 stitches. So you'll have 14 of these back loop only single crochets. And here's a perfect example of why we want to stop and tug on our uh, yarn that we're covering just so that we don't get it kind of bulging out. Um, and at this point in the pattern, um, don't be surprised if you get a little bit of cupping, which is just where your um, work is gonna kind of round upwards and kind of cup upwards that is completely normal and it will work itself out. So we're just working a single crochet into each stitch all the way around and I know that black isn't the easiest color to um, see what you're doing with but thankfully we are using it on a white so that helps to see what you're doing a little bit um, but yeah I know it's not the best color for a tutorial but that's just the color that we need for a pokeball and this is going to be the outside of our um, like button on the pokeball so once you get to a point where like your little little tail of black that you're covering up is starting to get annoyingly short, I usually go ahead and just cut it. Um, you can continue to just work until it's completely gone, but when it gets to be like this short, it starts to just um, be frustrating to me uh, to work over. So I usually just go ahead and cut it. But we're still going to be working over our white and you're going to want to keep tugging on that um, because our white is going to be used later on and is not something we're cutting off. Okay and as we get close to being back at the beginning we are going to want to take a minute to count our stitches and just make sure that we haven't missed any um, and don't forget that when we first started we did not make a single crochet we just had our loop from slip stitching so we're gonna end in this first stitch which is where our black came out of so I should need only one more stitch so I have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve and thirteen stitches so that means that I am on track and I'm just going to do a back loop only single crochet into this first stitch where we had slip stitched in with our black. And that is the end of that row. So we're going to, um, we're going to do the same thing we did before when we switched colors. We're going to start to do a slip stitch. So we're going to go under both of the V's um, of the top of the stitch. Um, with the black and then instead of pulling the black through we are going to go ahead and introduce our red so we're gonna go ahead and put the red on here and we're gonna pull the red through and then we're just gonna th pull it through our black also and complete the slip stitch and then at this point I'm going to flip it over and I'm actually going to go ahead and cut the black um, working yarn because we don't need this for the time being and we don't need to carry it around um, as we work because we're not going to be switching to it so what I like to do at this point now that I've cut that 
is I like to tie my new red tail and my just cut black together and give them a little knot and this just secures both of them um, and I can either work over the tails for these or weave them in later that's your preference um, you're just going to always want to make sure that you're working over the color that we are keeping that we're carrying around. So at this point, the colors that we're going to be using are the red and the white. So whenever you're using the red, you'll be carrying the white. And whenever you're using the white, you'll be carrying the red. And what I mean by carrying is just when we're crocheting over that color to carry it around with us, but not actually crocheting in that color. So we have a um, loop on our hook from our slip stitch. We are going to, taking our red working yarn, chain three, which counts as our first double crochet. And then we're gonna wanna make sure that we hold our white to our work. And if you want to, also you may work over the white and red tails that you have so that you don't have to crow, uh, don't have to weave them in later. So whatever it is that you're carrying along with you, just make sure you've got a hold of that. And then this round is going to be increasing. So this counts as a sink as a our first stitch, but we're going to actually want to do a another double crochet in the same stitch and it's going to be another um, back loop only round. So it's a little bit harder to see with the black yarn but just get real close and uh, and get a look and you'll see that this right here if I can <laughs> loop under there we go. This right here is our back loop only. And I'm going to want to make sure that I have the colors I'm weaving over, over my hook as well. And then I'm just going to pull this red through my loop. And I'm going to have three loops on here. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And that gives us our um, second double crochet. And we are just going to do a total of 14 um, double crochet increases. Well, seven double crochet increases, but we'll have 14 stitches at the end. And don't forget, they are back loop only. Now, if back loop only is proving too difficult for uh, you to be able to see with the black yarn, I totally get that. Um, and this is honestly the case for the other round too. If you prefer not to do back loop only, um, you don't have to. So if you're struggling to see those back loop onlys and you decide that it's just not worth the little bit of stitch definition, um, that is totally fine. It's not going to make or break the pattern. It's not going to um, ruin it. Um, it's not a huge difference, um, but it just gives a little bit of stitch definition. Um, or color change definition. So feel free to omit the back loop only part if you need to. So we're just going to do a total of seven double crochet increases and we're carrying along that white and carrying along the tails if you decided to do that. So every two stitches right now, since we're doing increases, is one stitch on our black. So we know this is one, two, three, four, which is eight total double crochets if we're counting our chain three as a double crochet. So we're gonna go ahead and continue with our fifth double crochet increase. Some of those tails are starting to get shorter now. We're going to want to make sure we give those a little tug as we go. And there's our two double crochets in there and now our red is completely hidden. And I'm going to go ahead and cut this black tail that we were cutting or uh, weaving over because are working over because I think that it is nice and covered at this point. 
Um, and then I'm going to move on to the back loop only double crochet increase for this stitch, which I believe was six. And give this a little tug. And our last one, which is, should be our seventh. Okay, and then just double check before we switch to the white. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen red double crochets, including this chain as a double crochet. Um, you're going to want 14 red and then now we're going to do 14 white. We have seven stitches on this side as well and we're going to switch to the white actually in the last loop of this double crochet. So this double crochet when you are doing your yarn over uh, pull through two yarn over pull through two. On your second pull through two you're going to actually pull the white through instead of the red. So let me show you what that looks like just redoing the double crochet so that I know that you are like fully aware of what we're doing. So for this last one, this is a double crochet that I'm doing. Um, for our last double crochet, I just took it out. You're going to yarn over, go through, pull up your loop, yarn over, pull through two, and then instead of yarning over and pulling through two again to complete the double crochet, we are going to switch to white and yarn over with that and pull through our last two. And that's just going to end our double crochet with white on our hook instead of red. Then we're just going to continue the same way we have been, but now we're going to have red as our color we're carrying through and white as the color that we are crocheting with. So we're just going to continue to do back loop only double crochet increases in the last seven stitches and giving our red that we're carrying through a little tug every now and then just to make sure that it is laying flat in there. Pull some white out of my skein. And just continue to work my way around. And like I said before with the black row, you will see some cupping at this point. Don't worry, that's completely normal. And it will even itself out and it will lay flat by the end of the project. When you're using these metallic yarns, you have to be careful not to uh, pull a piece of the metallic separately from the uh, color like I just did. Sometimes those metallics like to try to, metallic strips like to try to uh, stay on the hook or get on the hook. <laughs> And once you have worked your double crochets all the way around, carrying that red with you, we're gonna work our last double crochet increase. And then, you guessed it, we are gonna double check to make sure we have 14. So, counting our stitches that we just did in white, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So we have exactly how many we're supposed to have. And like the last row, we're going to do a color change. So we're going to take this white and take it out of those last two loops and switch to red. I have a hair there. <laughs> Um, switch to red on our hook and pull through those last two loops. 
Now with red on our hook, we're gonna go and we're gonna go into the first um, double crochets top, which is actually the one, two, three, third chain that we had originally um, that we had originally crocheted, and we are gonna slip stitch with our red. And you might have seen I pulled this up and crocheted over it because we are gonna carry the white through this round as well. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna double, or we're going to chain three. And this is gonna count as our first double crochet. For this round, we're going to alternate between <clears throat> one double crochet and a double crochet increase all the way around. So that was one double crochet for our first stitch. And then we are going to put two double crochets in our second stitch. One double crochet in our third stitch. Two double crochets in our fourth stitch. And we're just going to continue this pattern. <clears throat> we're just going to continue this pattern all the way around. And it's going to be one double crochet. Increase. One double crochet. Increase. And we're going to continue this in all of our red stitches that we already have from our previous round. And we're just going to one double crochet and increase until we get to the end of our red. And we're going to end with a decrease or not a decrease, sorry, we're going to um, end on an increase stitch with our red. And then once we end on that increase stitch with our red, we will be doing our last color change to white. So we're gonna put one double crochet two double crochet and then instead of yarning over and pulling through the last two for the second half of this double crochet I am going to yarn over with my white and pull it through as the last loop of that double crochet. Now we are done with the red and as to not carry it around again um, and it be kind of visible in the white I'm actually going to <clears throat> go ahead and cut my red and I'm going to knot it to the white that I'm currently working with and then I will just leave this red tail this time um, and weave it in uh, because I don't want to carry it through the white if I don't have to um, because it is a little bit visible through being such a bright and dark color compared to the white. So I'm just going to leave this red's tail back here and I will weave that in later. So now it's really simple. We're literally just going to be uh, crocheting with our white now and we don't have to cover anything. So since we ended on an increased stitch for this last stitch, uh, this one is just going to get one double crochet with our white. And then we're going to continue our pattern and do an increase stitch. And we are going to continue that all the way around with one double crochet and then an increase. One double crochet and then an increase. And as we make our way back around 
to the red where we began, we are actually about finished. So we are going to um, do a final slip stitch when we get back around. And then we will do a chain and cut our yarn. <clears throat> so we're ending on a double crochet and then like I said we're going to in our third chain one two three we're going to put our last slip stitch and just give that a good little tug and then we're going to chain one give that a good little tug and then we are actually going to cut our white and we're just gonna pull through like this and give this a little tug. That creates a little knot there so that you don't have to worry about that coming out. Um, and this is the main body of the Pokeball done. Um, now we're going to be doing some surface stitching, um, some surface slip stitches. So we're gonna wanna grab our black again. We're gonna be doing some surface stitching with our black. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is put a slip knot in our black. And put that on, um, or actually don't put that on our hook yet. Um, but you could put it on there and give it a little bit of a tug if you'd like to so that it's not too giant. Maybe about that, about that big. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take our Pokeball and where we had just ended, we're going to um, go through here and pop our hook in the middle of this slip stitch that we had just created. Um, sorry, we're going to pop it through to the back. And then we're going to put this... Um, loop on our hook and we're going to pull it through. So now that we have a uh, black um, on our hook and we're on the top like this, what we're going to do is we're going to start reaching down into different points along this path um, to pull up a loop and do a chain. And that's going to create a surface um, stitching to give us the black lines that we want to create our Pokeball look. So just to remind you what that looks like, this is the step that we're doing to give us this really nice defined black Pokeball look. So we're going to reach down in and you can do this at any point um, just to create a solid line. And then now that you have two um, loops on your hook, you're just going to pull the second one through the first one and it's literally just a chain, just a slip stitch, um, or a chain, if you will. Um, and then we're going to go, okay, so there's a, a nice secure spot right here. So I'm going to go right here, pull up another one, and pull through the other loop that was on my hook. <clears throat> and we're just going to continue that um, going all the way down and you can uh, go into like the side stitch if you want on either the red or the white. It doesn't matter really where you go through um, as long as you keep your line relatively straight and just continue to um, find little spots to push through uh, and then pull up a loop. So for my last loop, I am uh, at, at the black now, the black round that we did in the beginning. Um, and I'm actually going to continue to surface stitch, um, going around this black circle to give it more definition. So the last one that I did, I connected in through the black. And now I'm just going to push in and pull up my loop and pull it through the loop on my hook. And I'm kind of gonna do that in the little spaces um, in between my stitches where the white kind of shows up. 
but you can really push through and pull out anywhere um, in your row as long as you're sticking with this circle shape and that's going to give you a nice defined black circle. And we're just going to continue that all the way around. Popping down through to the other side to pull up a loop wherever we find a nice little spot to do so. And we're going to continue all the way around our circle back to where we first got to the black when we were slip stitching from this side. So this is called surface stitching. And then once we make our way back around to the beginning, we will push down into that same spot or close by it where we had done our original um, slip stitch. And then we're actually going to go ahead and cut our black yarn. And we're just going to uh, go ahead and pull this loop up. All right, we'll give that a little tug. And then we're going to thread that onto our darning needle. These metallic uh, fibers make it a little bit more difficult to do things like that sometimes. Um, and then the next thing that we're going to do is just go through the middle of this little intersection here and pull that black through to the back. And that nicely secures it off and we have this whole portion done and we just have this little spot right over here to do now in our slip stitching. So what I'm going to do real quick is um, I'm going to knot this black to the white that I still have back here from my uh, magic circle. And that's not necessary, but I like the added security of throwing a knot in here and there to secure things. And then I'm just going to leave those and I'll weave them in in a minute. So for our last little bit of slip stitching, we're going to grab our black yarn again. And we're gonna do the same thing we did on the other side. We're going to do a slip knot. And I'm gonna put it on my hook for just a moment to kind of shrink it down a little bit. And then I'm going to go to the other side and do the same thing I had done um, before. I'm going to attach in, and you can attach in to either the white or the, the uh, red. It doesn't really matter over here. And we're gonna put that loop on our hook and we're going to pull it through. And then we're just gonna start working our way down um, this line where we want the black to kind of divide the red and the white and putting our surface stitches in. So to do that we just poke our hook down, grab our working yarn, pull it up, and pull that through. And we're just going to continue to do that all the way down so that we create this line of black. And you can give a little tug to that first part where that uh, tail 
where we just had attached if you need to. Um, since it's not secured yet, it might um, kind of try to pop up at the top. So you can give that a little tug if you need to. And then we're just going to go until we hit the black of the middle. And then we're going to do one last slip stitch. And then we're going to do the same as before. We're going to cut that black working yarn that we're using. And we're just going to pull up on our hook and pull that black yarn up through the top. And we're going to give that a little tug. And we are going to put that on our darning needle. <clears throat> so now we're going to go down into the black somewhere over here on the top and just push our needle through to get that black to the back. Okay. Um, and then now I'm going to show you how to finish our edges. So you may have noticed when we first start, there's a little bit of a spot right here that doesn't have the black. And what I like to do is put this yarn, the starting yarn that we had, um, the tail at the beginning from our slip knot, put that back on my hook. And I literally just go in, since it's from the bottom, I go in through the top with my um, needle. And then I do the same thing kind of over to the other side a little bit. And it's going to kind of replicate a stitch. Just like that. And then now I've got the red uh, tail over here on this side that I started with. So I'm just going to go ahead and give that a little knot. Not pulling too tightly because I don't want to cinch my black edge that I just did. And then I'm just going to put these on my hook and weave them in. For the black, I'm just going to follow the uh, line of black that's here and weave back and forth. into this black and then pull my needle through and there's my black secured so I can go ahead and trim that and I'm going to do the same thing with my red and I'm mostly just doing this to pull them all kind of away from the edges. This is not a um, <clears throat> reversible pattern, but I still like to weave them in. So for this one, I'm just going to weave it in um, between the all these red stitches right here, just right in the middle of them. And you'll notice I did not pop through the front. I'm just putting it right inside of them and pulling it through. And then the same as with the black, um, I can go ahead and trim that now. Now, if you wanted to make this a reversible pattern, um, maybe if you're doing a coaster, uh, you could literally just make another one of these and um, slip stitch them together all around the outsides um, or single crochet them together all around the outside loops or sew them together. Um, so you could definitely make it a two-sided pattern if you would like to, or a reversible, um, you know, double-sided uh, coaster or whatever you would like to do with it. So I'm just putting the black um, on this other side on my needle now so that I can do the same thing I did on the other side over here, which is to put the black over here to make it look like um, it goes all the way to the edge. And then I'm just going to go over a little bit further and do the same thing to try to kind of replicate a stitch. Okay. 
And if you want to, you can try to hide this white a little bit more. It won't hurt anything um, for you to like thicken up the black line a little bit at the end. That's totally your preference. And you can also use this time to um, secure anything that you feel like needs secured. Um, if you, you know, would like to kind of secure down your, your slip stitching or anything like that, um, you can do that while you're doing your sewing. But once you're happy with your slip stitching, then you can go ahead and flip this over and knot together your white and your black on this side. And then we're going to do the same thing we did on the other side and we are just going to weave in our tails. So for the white, I'm just going to do the same thing I did with the red. I'm going to find the middle of these stitches and I'm just going to push my hook through there like that, making sure that it doesn't come through the front too much. I'm happy with that and I'm just going to pull through. And then I can go ahead and cut my yarn. And then for the black, I'm just going to weave my way through the black that I already have from the slip stitching. Or next to it, either way. Just so that I'm not adding extra black to the front of my pattern is basically the idea. Um, so I'm going to put it in in a way that it doesn't show through to the front. <clears throat> and I believe all of these are knotted down at this point. Just to make sure, I'm not 100% sure if that black one is. So just to make sure I'm going to weave my way over to it with this white and keep in mind this is the back so you don't have to do this if you don't want to um, depending on what you're making you if you don't see the back of it then uh, you know you don't have to make it all pretty in the back of <laughs> it. But I went ahead and pulled that white over to there and I'm going to knot this. But I think you get the idea, you know, just knotting things together and then weaving in the tails. Um, and once you have all of those woven in, I will meet you back. All right, and we have finished. So here we have our finished Pokeball appliques um, or coasters or really anything that you want to do with them. Um, if you wanted to finish them um, off and make them into a coaster and you wanted to put a little edging on it, uh, you could just do some single crochets or something around the edges. Um, this is really like, you could do anything you want with this. These would make great appliques to sew onto a project. Um, or if you would like to go a step further and turn them into a granny square, I am going to be linking in the description um, a pattern or a video tutorial for how to take this applique a step further and finish it out into a granny square. So if you would like to do that, check the description for the link. And thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you found this to be a helpful tutorial and that you liked it. Uh, please leave a comment and let me know what you thought. Let me know what you're going to use your uh, applique for. And I hope everybody has a fantastic day. I will see you on the next video. Bye, guys.